Well, hello everybody, welcome to End Zone and World Apart. Now this is a game, basically a post-apocalyptic banish that just doesn't get really any attention even though it is an amazingly fun game. We're gonna start a new game, survival mode. I will be playing on advanced difficulty. I will warn you, this game is super hard. This is actually gonna be an immense challenge for me, even with experience. Now I like to get a medium number of lakes, medium number, I like medium everything, quite honestly. And what I like to do is get a mountain range and lakes for farming later, but uh, the mountain ranges make really good barriers. You get raised later in the game quite often and the mountains just make a section that you can bottleneck towers and stuff so there is actually kind of like an end game that you want all right i think this is about the best i can find so when i look at a map i want a nearby lake for water and farming and i want corner lakes for later game farming for far off residential areas most likely what you're going to do is have a residential area in the center and then you're going to have industrial areas surrounding it and farming surrounding it. That way you have just an efficiency of workers. And the settlement name, most important thing, calling this place Rustington. So you get yourself a little magic school bus and you start off with a colony of about, I think, 12 people. This looks like a good place to settle. And you know what we learned in the end people who speak in British accents for absolutely no reason. So we got 10 people and we got five children. All right. So this is your starting area. This is your bus. This is your safe space. Um, but you're quickly going to need to expand or you will die. So here's our first freshwater supply. Here is our expansion area. Inner area right here is going to be good for residentials. And then we can do farming and more water collection at a later point. And then we have this massive water area here, which most likely at the end of the game is going to be completely surrounded by farmland. So what you got is this thing here. You hit X, you can see terrestrial radiation. You can also remove terrestrial radiation. But early game, it's really important not to build on this stuff. And it ebbs and flows in the sense that radiation is always moving in and moving out. And you can have highly aerated areas, etc. So it gets a little tricky. Soil most moisture is another thing that's pretty tricky. Uh, if it's raining or if it's wintry or that time of the year, you'll have higher concentrations of soil moisture. But it will slowly pull away towards the lake areas. So you can see this is wet. This is moist. This is dry. This is dried out. So this is a good area in general but it changes dramatically. You have droughts, uh, periodic droughts, electricity, building condition, etc. So first things first, let's get some basics down. We need to build bare minimum stuff. That is a cistern. A late, eventually we'll build a water tower, but we don't have the resources, the proper resources to build it yet. And a jitty. And then I'll get into the whole thing about um, making sure your water supply is clean because you can irradiate your whole town pretty easily and kill everybody. It's really, really easy to die in this game it's not like other games you just have a well and they drink out of it this game you have radiation you got all types of stuff all right so we got the cistern and the jitty which is what they use to go get everything and then for food we're gonna build ourselves a fishing hut which is my other favorite building to build in the game and we can build it right here now we also get roads in this game and roads are an important thing and I have played this game enough that I can give you guys some advanced knowledge of how to properly do a road system. Because if you screw up, you have to move around everything. And it is a huge pain in the ass. And I actually have a good housing layout that I use. Okay. And then the second thing we want to build is a scrapyard. I'm going to build a little bit from the lake because this is prime real estate right here. I'm going to build um, a scrapyard. Actually, like a lot of this is prime real estate, to be honest. Let's build a scrapyard and stuff over here. And the forester hut. Let's build a forester hut over here. There's there's plenty to go around. Forest hut over there. And eventually we will need a charcoal kiln. And it gets really hard because you have to have tools and you have to have charcoal to clean your water. You have to have radiation protection to keep your people radiated. The biggest thing in this game isn't getting food and water, which are already difficult to do. The biggest thing in this game is not dying from radiation. So that's a whole thing. Later in the game, you're going to get electricity and you need poles to move the electricity around your village. This is where people make a mistake. You also need decorations to keep things looking nice. So what you want to do, it's really simple. You just use a two prong road system like this. This leaves a gap so you can put decorations and, ele and electric poles at the later stages of the game. This is the strategy I use for all of my roads and it just future, it's extreme future proofing. You'll be able to place every single building. You won't have to move anything around. Do so you see what I'm doing? I'm just creating the advanced infrastructure so that at the later stages of the game, I can place electric poles and decorations between everything. 
This just keeps everything really clean and really easy. Now here is going to be special. This is going to be the main, the main corridor. So we're going to get all of that out. And now that I have that set down, I can get my cabin up. And you see how the cabins just fit perfectly into this design. And then they have the ability to have decorations right here. So I'll have, I'll have more housing here and they can share these decorations. And I leave one tile in between. So I have the option to place an electric pole and then I can fill it in later with other decorations. But this is how I, I do decorations in my design and allow for the proper electric infrastructure. So now what we're going to do is get the builders a building and we're going to want three people doing that and as many people as we can doing fish. This is the hardest part of the game because you don't have a lot of people and you got to get water fast. You have a weather system down here that tells you when there's going to be no rain or when there's going to be droughts or events. And droughts do come and you have no water, which is why you need to get a water tower up as soon as possible. There's also a lot of game here. I am tempted to build a hunter's cabin. All right, we got five builders. All right, let's, uh, let's leave people to do their thing. You can also manually collect resources if you have more like a bunch of people standing around doing nothing you can tell them to cut trees down extension um i i just use these things originally but there, there's more advanced things to this game so if you think i'm missing something i i'll go over it trust me all right we're going fast the builder's going all right so now we got this going up I'm going to get all the builders on this. All right. Fishing is up. This uh, jetty is up, and this is what they use to get water. And, and the water really sucks in the beginning of the game. But you want to make sure that you have a lot of water. Um, and a lot of food. And the fishy fishery should do that. So our main goal right now is just to focus on the bare necessities. Oh, God. We need to get, um, okay. So let's get two people in each of these. Um, I'm feeling pretty confident we need to get three water guys. I'm gonna hold off on building. I don't think we have any homeless at the moment. We got our three little shacks here. And then another thing that you kind of want to get up soon to make sure that people are happy and uh, not contemplating dark and mischievous things. And you can see that this is the perfect place to put it. That's why I do my system this way. Um, you want to put this around where your houses are going to be. And I think that my houses are going to be more so around this area because there's more buildable space. So I'm going to build a campfire there. Eventually I'll build a forum. But I need wood and scrap and I'm trying not to overextend my resources too much at the beginning of the game. Now I am going to want to build a f two more cabins to allow for expansion too. And I'll expand the roads as necessary. Actually, now's actually a really good time to expand the roads because you just got people sitting around with their, you know what's out. And later, later on we get paved roads. Um, and I will, I'll figure out what to do about this. I'll cycle out just expand it like that, and then I'll connect it with another system at a later date. But now we have this expansion. And I want to keep consistency of the of the two system. So this is just like basically like I said future proofing it so it's easy to add electricity. There we go. I got a road system. And same here. Okay, and we can build more storerooms. We can build water points over here, which is actually very beneficial. Um, at this stage of the game though, I don't find it necessary. Decontamination post is another one that we want to get up pretty early. Um, 
this is pretty critical to keep you can lose real fast if people start getting sick so all right well, we got the campfire though and the campfire like i said is very good and we're uh, you can it tells you if your population is growing or declining this is a good game um it's just it's got a lot of fun features it's a good survival game it's hard and, and people just don't play it uh research station is another one i want to get up eventually right now we're in the baby stage this game actually gets way fun shit got, got homeless people now all right get up a couple more houses i think that means that we can um our wood supply sucks let's boot up that to four this, the water collection i think is actually really good the fisher is what sucks um yeah let's get the fisher to four all right we got people a living we see we got the the hedge is up, so people people like it here. Local traction is 10. Local traction is 10. It's not really going up yet, but uh, these things do help. People like shrubberies. And we got this bus, and you can see that someone here is irradiated. The building produces contaminated resources. So I need the irradiator bros over here uh, to help out. So now it's telling me that a drought's incoming. So you, you need water towers. Think of it like timber board. <laughs> um, and you can see that this is con this fishing hut's contaminated, which means all the food that I'm bringing in is contaminated, which is why you gotta get this contamination post up as soon as possible. However, we need plastic and coal. And in order to get coal, I need to build a charcoal kiln. And I will need charcoal kiln uh, to make coal in addition to, for the water tower, which uses coal as a filtration, early filtration. So coal is incredibly important. So we'll get that up and hopefully um, we need to move this area down here. Now, I, I know I'm covering a lot of points and I do apologize for going over, you know, quickly through everything. Scrap is really important. Eventually we will run out of all of this scrap. We'll have to go further and further away to get scrap. There's quite a bit of scrap in this game. However, later in the game, you can get these things called uh, sand, like sand catcher. I forget what they're called exactly. You build these things and when sandstorms come, they collect scrap from the wind. So that's, uh, that's how you do it later in the game. But early game, this is how you do it. And eventually you have to start building those because if you run out of scrap, you can't build tools, can't build, you don't get all the raw resources you need to build everything in the game. So that's that's a big one. Um, yeah, recycler is good. Scrap, scrap pictures are good too. Um, what we probably need to end up doing, however, is manually assigning people to to gather scrap when they're not doing anything. We need to just like randomly find plastic and all that goody type stuff. Um, I mean, we don't have anybody working in these industries here. I get one person working in coal. As you can see, we're we're running out of food. It, it's a really hard balancing act. Um, I think the hunter's lodge would make the most sense right now in the early game. And then they give you tasks, so I need to build a tailor shop and build carbon mask, or they're gonna get upset with me, and my happiness is gonna go down. Um, I'm a little worried about my food production right now. I'm gonna put the hunter's cabin on build next. We'll get through it. We have a drought coming in, which means that we're not gonna get any fish. At which point I can um, move people from the fish to this boy. And we'll get um, all three people here. And you can see we have quite a bit of animals coming in. And min maxing everything as I speak. We have enough water to survive, but yeah, things are advancing. It's a very, it's a very challenging start. There we go. And then we got dinner. That's how you do it. All right, buildings built that can get food. They want two out of three, and that makes sense to me. Um, the second thing I think I should probably get up is a gatherer's hut. Usually, what I do with the gatherer's hut is I get a forester who only plants trees, and that's just like you know, it's a. Uh, Zimo. So we'll put this guy here, have him go down here. We got lots going on. 
looks like our water supply is going down, our food supply is going down. Um, definitely need to like reconsider some of our process here. I need five water catchers. Eventually we'll actually need more. We need four fishermen. The water's coming back right now, and we need four gathers. We also need... Nice. We won one of our awards. Very good. Um, but you can you can see I'm actually going to have to slow this down here. Alright, so they want me to produce a lot of water. So this is what happens is you have these... You have a drought, and then another drought, and then everything's fine. So I got a lot of problems to solve right now. I got a massive homelessness issue. I'm growing faster than I honestly want to. I'm gonna build the houses there. I might do a road system right here. I kind of like to do sections of four. And then um, water I need to... I don't have... See, I need plastic and coal. Cisterns are a lot easier to build. Unfortunately. And of course I placed that wrong. So I need to get another cistern. I eventually really need to get a water tower up. And um... Probably get another one of these up. Eventually I'll have multiple cisterns, but uh, gonna, gonna need one for sure. Alright, and with that, uh, now we just need more people. Which is, incidentally, is the problem. <laughs> okay. Gathers. Yeah, Alright, so they're gathering around here, and there's actually quite a bit around here, so I'm okay with that. Build that next. Don't know if I'm going to get enough water in time. But we are doing pretty well in all other areas of the game. Got one person who's unhappy. We got 21 people who don't have protective clothing, so they're going to get very sick if, if and when the water comes in. All right. Forester at two. Water collector at six. There we go. We got six people collecting water, which really honestly should be quite enough. Actually, thousand. We're definitely not doing too hot on food. We got ten charcoal though, that's good. All right, we just got six people in. So 10 water collectors, maximum food. Um, get the scrap up a bit. Yeah, we got, and we gotta get all the basic productions up. You gotta kind of expand really quickly into production. That's what makes this hard. Unfortunately, that is another thing I have to get up is the uh, recycler so I can get plastics. And you actually need quite a bit of these these units in the game. Let's start another road right here. This will be the next building I make. Um, plastic is holding me back from getting up some new buildings. Decontamination unit needs plastic. That was an oversight on my part. Said there was no tools, so we're gonna have decreased efficiency. It just you get this huge problem. the The thing about this game is you run out of resources really quickly and it requires you to expand and that expansion creates just a massive amount of issues it's so um, reasonably hard to get to a point where you have a population you don't need to expand any further the beginning of the game is honestly all about rapid ex rapid and controlled expansion um because you have to produce tools and protection or everyone dies, so it's not an option, but you need people. And the more people you have, the more 
water and the more food you need. So the more people you need to get those resources for the more people. And it just becomes this, like, catch-22. Like, you're kind of, like, just, like, in this perpetual growth s scenario. Like, you have to expand to expand. And because you expanded, you have to expand again. Um, and then you need more protective gear for those people who are making the food for the people who you got to make protective gear. So, um, that's what makes this game difficult, is it's very, very challenging in that, in that respect. So, we're just going to make sure that everyone is doing their jobs. And once we get this up, we'll be in better shape. You can see that we have a lot of water right now. And our food is pretty good. We're not doing a, a, a great job at this point. But we're not doing as bad as you can. Um, you just got to kind of like look at what is the emergency and respond to it. Um, we are... Ex you can see we are getting very irradiated, and this is dangerous because the get it means every food that they gather is contaminated, and everyone who eats that food is now contaminated. So this is why we need to get the plastics and the decontamination unit up as soon as possible. They go in and they clean out the buildings, etc. So our whole village can die within a matter of hours um, if we do not we do not get our proper setup. So here I want them to focus on doing plastic. So they are going to take trash and make plastic out of it. And we have scrap. Sorry. They take scrap and then they turn it to cloth, metal, or plastic. So we're going to have probably two. And you can only have one person working in them at the moment. We're probably going to have uh, two per item needed eventually. So we'll have around six. And then once we get enough plastic, we get that up. I forgot about them. I'm sorry about that. I forgot. They're like a really critical thing. And, um... Our population's expanding a little too quickly. But with great... Ooh, nice. Yeah, with, the, with these new people, though, we do have the potential to... to really get, get going on things we need. I'm gonna overboard it. Okay. So, as I told you... Eventually we'll have six, uh, six of these. At the time being, we just need to get enough. And um, I'm going to go with four. One for each, and then a miscellaneous one to change any time I'm down on one of them. So this will be cloth. This will be metal. Most likely I'll actually do two metals in the beginning. And um, they're having a hard time finding food right now. Let's have them go down a little bit further. The hunting lodge is finding food, but not as much as it really should. And we're running out of water. We came out of a drought. We're going into another drought here soon. Um, which necessitates the need of this water tower right here. We're going to get this water tower up as soon as possible. We have nine homeless. Okay, we've got some buildings going up for them. We're doing a good job. Ooh, we got a lot of Bambies over there. Sorry, Bambi. I gotta feed. I gotta feed my people. I'm gonna send the Bambi hunters over there. And the charcoal kiln's doing a great job. We got 22. Um, we don't have any tools. Let me look at resources. We're gonna get a workshop up. Oh, so we do have scrap and stuff over here. So. Daisy, sorry, that's charts. Um, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna move this over here, and I need them to gather all the scrap in the area. And your excess people will do that. That could take some time. Looks like we got some pigs back over here, so or whatever you want to call those things. And then we'll need to make sure that our refineries are at full so now we're producing a lot and this is why i was telling you that scrap is the lifeblood of your entire economy because it's used to create cloth metal and plastic which are used to create protection tools and all that stuff all right so the next thing that we need to do yeah i got you i know you're pissed off and you want stuff i know 
I'm well aware. All right, we're gonna build a workshop here and a tailor right here. Yeah, they went to school. Just keep talking about how the children are the future. I'm the future. All right, um, we got 52 people without protective clothing. Protective clothing really is one of the, the largest um, issues in the game that I have. It's really hard uh, to keep to keep up with all that. We got 10 people collecting water, which seems to be sufficient. I'm probably gonna want to start planting fields for crops here soon. Oh, did we get the, we got the decontaminated? De 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 so. This is like, uh, if you, fo you follow me in um, this Frontier, think of the decontamination de post as the rat catcher. This is what goes around cleaning things. So anytime you see a building with a radiation symbol, go ahead and put your circle around that bad boy. So now he's going to get rid of all the radiation, which you saw here he has been doing. So now, and that's, as I said, it's important. If the water supply gets irradiated, the food, su food supply gets irradiated, it brings it over and it is irradiated in storage and whoever eats it gets radiation. And radiation spreads pretty quick. How do I have so many freaking homeless people? All right. All right, water needs better, uh, better. All right. <laughs> water better, no, I need more water people. Um, but I also need more everybody. So, okay, the tower is getting up. What are, they, what are they getting up now? Okay, yeah, cool, cool. You also need to make sure you have a hefty amount of scrap coming in. We don't. We have 329. Alright, um, yeah, we already. So, you can see you can go through an area pretty quick. Got one thirsty settler. Um, we're gonna have a lot of thirsty settlers here if the rain don't come. We got a rainstorm coming in tomorrow. Um, we got the tower up. So this is where you want to activate the filtration system. And this uses coal, but it keeps the water tank from getting irradiated and it gives you fresh water and it's incredibly critical. You have to, you have to do it. Otherwise everyone gets radiation poisoning and dies. Um, food is becoming an issue. So, we're going to build out our first 12 by 12 farm. And hopefully that will help alleviate some food issues. And they're, right now you can see they're getting rid of the decontamination within the soil. It's all contaminated. And they need protective clothing. I'm, I'm well aware of that actually. And right now I'm building basic scrap tools, which uses scrap and wood. So that's cool because I don't have to uh, use um, iron, but you can make iron tools eventually. And the tailor shop can use cloth, or it can use cloth and charcoal to make um, carbon gas masks. So I'm going to go for carbon gas masks because they're going to last longer. Um, however, oh gosh darn it, I have a lot of contamination. I, I do need to increase the amount of people getting carbon. We're just like kind of making it right now. We got a good source of food here. We're gonna we're gonna grow squash. That will produce 720 food. I'm gonna do two farmers on that. I'll need to I'll need to look up um, efficiencies on farming. I actually don't know what the most efficient farm size is and worker. Um, I'll have to Google that one. All right, cool. We're decontaminating things. We're keeping things clean. You can see we're doing a little bit of a better job, but um, our population is growing too fast. We might have to um, start doing some decrees where we send the old out into the fields to die. Um, and that's not a joke. That is a thing you can do in the game. Makes people sad, but you know they get over it or they die um, because there's not enough to go around. Our herbalist would be a good thing too. We we definitely need to keep keep the village um, healthy. I'm gonna put that guy up. 
really, really stoked about the water tower, to be honest. Out of all things, um, let's start. Let's start getting to business, though. Charcoal burner at three. Decontaminator at two. Builder at three. Farmer, no, farmer at two. Let's boot up water carrier to seventeen. I got two decontaminators now, so. Um. Yeah, cloth is cloth is the bottleneck right now. So we're gonna boot this guy over to cloth. That's why I built the fourth guy. Oh, we're doing really well though. We're coming back, but it's hard. It's gonna be um, protective clothing is the hard part. I need to get the expedition team up. You can find interest. You can start going for interesting locations. And you can find loot and gear, and you can find um, protective clothing, too. Anyway, that's going to be the next episode, if people actually watch this and like it. If you want me to continue the series, please comment and tell me to continue the series and like it so it gets picked from the algorithm. Otherwise, um, thank you for watching. I hope you can see how interesting of a game this is. It's actually really cool. A lot of people don't play it. And uh, have a good day.